Hello, welcome to my channel, Wing Spiritual Clarity. My name's Wendy Wing. I'm doing a reading for the collective, Welcome Collective. I'm so glad that you're here and sharing your energies with me. Just want to start off the reading by <clears throat> appreciating you. Um, I'm really enjoying this space. I'm really enjoying getting to know um, many of you through the comments and um, and in the readings, those of you who have uh, scheduled a, a personal reading with me. So I feel like I'm starting to get to know um, this little family here. And I just want to let you know how much I appreciate you. Wow, so many cups coming out so far in this reading. Maybe that's why I'm feeling so appreciative and this just a really beautiful, loving energy today. So anyway, since this is a general reading, uh, take what resonates and leave the rest. All right. So collective, in the past, you were in the energy of seven of swords. Seek the truth. Hmm. Okay, what I'm getting, I'm picturing the energy of this card more like the original Seven of Swords. Um, in the past, someone was sneaking, deceptive, stealing, trying to get away with something. It, it feels like around um, the truth um trying to it, it definitely feels like getting away with trying to get away with something this this energy of someone being deceptive sneaky stealing trying to get away with something created a lot of disappointment it it made you feel abandoned um, I get the feeling that, um, whatever this is related to, it feels especially astonishing because the person who was stealing, the person who was lying, the person who I'm getting, this could be a cycle of, of someone stealing someone lying someone getting away like getting one up on you even though they have the funds they are in a better position and so they someone really took advantage of someone someone who was weaker not connected maybe isolated someone who is easy to take advantage of because they aren't protected because they don't have connections. And, and so it, it feels like, um, oh, this is, you might've experienced this quite a bit uh, in the recent history. <clears throat> it's created, it, it um, heightens your abandonment issues people taking advantage of you saying they're going to give you one thing and and eventually you realize there's it was all a fabrication something that you have to leave behind something that you invest a lot of time and trust and energy in and and it and um you end up losing and walking away with nothing. This has created um, a lack of direction, a lack of control, some aggression, like so much frustration. I can feel this well of frustration, like um, WTF. I mean, <laughs> It, it, I think the part that really gets me is that this really feels like people taking advantage of someone who is already depleted, like preying on people who 
um, can't fight back, preying on people who um, don't have the means necessary. You know, they've got one pentacle left and someone has nine and they take the one pentacle. Like this is just a, a lot of um, inequality that's happened in the past. Ooh, I could just feel this um, rage from this energy of, of being taken advantage again and again and again. And it's creating a lot of things like a lack of being able to trust yourself, a lack of being able to trust others. Ooh. All right, in present time collective, you're in the energy of the fool. Trust. This is the beginning of a new journey. In the last several readings, I'd say in the last week or so, there's been a lot of closing out of cycles. Cycles closing out, like a lot of cycles, and something new is beginning. And right now it feels like um, you're stepping into a new cycle, a new you. It feels like this has taken you forever. Feels like um, there's just been so many delays in Um, right now, especially, it feels like just when you start to feel some progress, some movement, then, um, there's delays. I'm, I'm getting right now, um, there, the energy, the timeless reading, however, I am uh, recording this on November, on November 1st. 2022 and the energies right now are really um, contracting in the month of November. It's happened even in October. Um, if if you're interested in the energies that I'm talking about in this contraction, um, I watched a video. I'll put the link down below from the Realization Hub. Um, Michelle was a teacher of mine years and years ago that helps uh, teach me my psychic abilities. She's an amazing teacher. And anyway, in this video that she shared, there's a, she talks about how there's a lot of energetic um, compression in October and definitely in November. Um, and there's, compression happens before an expansion. So all those issues, when everything gets compressed, when the energy gets compressed, you can see the energies, you can feel the energies in a more dense and, and real profound way. You could look at that as things get more difficult. However, you could say they become more clear because there's so much density, you're, you're now able to, to see what's going on, feel what's going on in a very profound way. So it's a, a space for profound transformation. Right now, it feels like if you are experiencing delays and feeling the resistance and the standstill of wanting to step in, of wanting that freedom, it's you're 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 ready you're primed for that new you that new cycle it it just might take a while before this first this compression needs to happen a family pattern that you are working through right now is two of cups coming together So a family pattern around partnerships. It feels like uh, romantic partnerships. So let's see what family pattern. Okay, so we're looking at family patterns where 
couples in your family where they're misaligned, where there's a lack of teamwork, where there's disharmony and group conflict. Yeah, competition energy, disagreements, tension, strife. I get the feeling that there's a family pattern of having to look out for yourself. Okay, what I'm getting is this family pattern. You're raised in a family that was not a, a very loving, inclusive environment, but it's competitive and power dynamics where someone was on the top and someone's at the bottom of the hill. And, you know, being at the bottom of the hill sucks because that's where shit rolls. And what I'm getting is um, a family pattern that's coming up is rejection and obsession. I'm getting that in this environment, this un unloving, competitive environment where everybody's really individuals out to, they have to take care of themselves. There's really no cohesion within the family unit. There's pretense and of love and caring, but it, it's really everybody's kind of out for themselves. And it feels like everybody's been neglected. Everyone has trauma, unhealed trauma. Everybody is looking for that loving safe connection what i'm getting is that you might have originally had some type of need as a child to make sure that you were cared for and looked after and not neglected and there was some family member um a parental figure one or the other that you were the closest to and depended on. I get that like, something happened during your childhood where you were close and you felt loved and cared for at times, but something shifted in this parental figure and they rejected you. <clears throat> They could have left the household. Whether they actually did reject you or not isn't the um, what's important. What's important is you perceived it as rejection. Maybe um, there is a divorce, maybe a separation. Somehow so a parent that you were connected with left and left with ease just wiped their hands of you. There was some type of rejection. And in this type of family household, rejection is very scary because then you are alone. Then you don't have the support of someone else. Then you are open to being bullied by people. Oh, this is coming in. Now I'm getting why this is in the past energy, this kind of... Um, something in the past that where someone stole from you someone took advantage of you and was sneaky even though they have more than you like a lot more and and they do that because they can because they know you're unprotected so it feels like the family pattern was feeling rejected by one of your family members, I'm getting either your father or your mother, it could be someone else, someone who is the, in the power position, someone who you relied on to protect you. And when they left, you perceived this as a personal abandonment. Maybe the other people left in the family after they left created this where they took advantage of you even though you were the lowest person on the totem pole, it created this dynamic where the people remaining in the house, you know, you were alone and bullied 
and taken advantage of. There's something around this uh, initial rejection that created an obsession. You were obsessed with and couldn't stop thinking about this parent who abandoned you. There is something I heard like rejection creates, rejection breeds obsession. And I'm getting um, that there's a childhood issue, a childhood family pattern that comes up around a rejection. And when you feel rejected, you obsess about, you, you, you're, you want that love and attention and safety from whatever it is that you were needing from that person that you didn't get. And instead you got rejection. It's like, oh, instead of like, oh, well, you know, part of uh, life is being rejected. Part of acceptance is learning how to deal with rejection and rejection is divine protection. If someone doesn't want to, uh, doesn't see your value and worth, um, then, you know, you can go find someone else who does. But instead, because you were a child and this is a family pattern, it feels like this rejection really affected your, like sur it kicked on a survival mode. It felt like survival, like you needed to, you felt very abandoned and left alone. And so you, instead of those, you know, realizing and understanding that, you know, I'm going to take care of me, I'm going to validate my worth and my value. Instead, it felt like the truth was your truth, the perception of your truth was that their rejection, you need to get their approval. You need to chase after them. You need to change their mind. You need to prove how valuable you are, how worthy you are. You know, they're not giving you that love and attention and care. They're, they're, they've left you. And so if you could just get them to see all the value, and so you spend a lot of mental energy, emotional energy, physical energy, just focusing on how, how I can get this person to, how can I shift their perception? I'm also seeing how this, if this is a cycle that you've been stuck in, of, of I because I'm seeing this as a cycle, then, then uh, you're focusing on the person who abandoned you, the parental energy who abandoned you, and you're focusing on that, which is creating an opening for you to be taken advantage of by someone else because you're still, you're focusing on getting approval from someone else and, and you're not noticing that you're being taken advantage of again. Maybe once you finally let go of that, then then you've got another cycle of, of people that who have shown up to take advantage of you, who also don't see your value and worth, who and so you you're constantly trying to prove your value and worth so you can get the relief of hearing them finally say all the things that you've been dying to hear from them instead of just telling yourself that you could we could cut this cycle out by just learning how to deal with rejection and understanding the underlying family patterns that are coming up and um and loving on yourself not needing if you need someone else to validate you then you are giving your power away Oh, wow. All right. A personal issue you're working through right now, collective, is Nine of Swords, Darkest Fears. I feel that rejection is one of your darkest fears. Oh, wow. I, I can see just like a it, it has informed 
it has informed so many of other beliefs of your self-worth and value. It, it has definitely created um, insecurities and um, and habits about how to deal with rejection. You might have learned how to deal with rejection by escapism or not allowing people to get close to you, you know, uh, protect yourself before it even happens. So you keep people at a distance, maybe shallow connections. Um, maybe you judge people really harshly as a defensive mechanism because there's a, um, a painful desire to avoid the feeling of rejection instead of getting closer to that feeling of rejection and feeling all the discomfort of it and still being okay. Kind of like building up your um, muscles to rejection with also the realization that rejection is a part of acceptance. You can't just be accepted, accepted, accepted. The world is working correctly when you receive rejection. It, I feel like you, you, as a child, you took that personally, maybe as a family pattern, everybody in the family, if you were rejected, took it very personally instead of realizing that if they're not jiving with you, if they're not on the same page, then then good. But I'll find someone who is on the same page. This, this is a great way so I can find who's a good fit for me. I, I, to find that belonging, to find that acceptance, the more rejection you get, the more you realize, okay, well, that's that's not a good fit. So the more I know what's not a good fit, I, I'm getting a clearer picture of what is a good fit. I get that when you get hit, when this rejection energy hits you, there's such an immense disappointment. You might have a lot of difficulty with the energy of disappointment. And you might spin out to, um, I, I just, I feel like any rejection, if this is resonating with you and you've been going on on your life, you know, carrying this wound of rejection around that's unhealed, then whenever it gets hit, then it, it, you feel the rejection of your whole life. You can feel it's so much more disappointing, the emotional, it's like all those emotions from all those years, all those decades, all those people all those unresolved rejections, all those unfelt, all those unprocessed, painful, traumatic rejections come out with every rejection now. And so it might be, it, it might make you feel very um, amplified in your emotions. I'm not saying that your emotions aren't accurate. You feel what you feel. However, they might be amplified because you're feeling the totality of all those rejections whenever you are feeling rejected. Whew. This does feel as difficult as this is to look at. This is very transformational why I'm seeing so many cups in this reading is because you're learning how to love yourself. You're learning your worth. 
you're stepping into your value. You're not allowing other people to assess a value to you. This feels like the, the well of love, not needing it to come from someone else, especially someone who's rejected you, but creating that well inside. Maybe you, you've been obsessed with needing that validation to come from whoever it is who rejected you. Maybe you've got like a handful of people in your life who, you know, you've experienced rejection from and you, you can list them. You, you know that story so much. You, you're needy, needing them to, and they, they won't, they won't give you, they won't give you what it is that you need. And the more you need it, the, the more turned off they are because they're, they're sensing your obsession. And that is a, a, a way for people to control you. That if you need something from them that you feel that can only come from them, instead of realizing that you can, you can validate yourself, you can find your own worth. It doesn't have to come from this person, these people. Actually, the more you need it to come from them, the more they control, they control you. So, um, your conscience right now, collective, is in the energy of four of cups. Opportunity beckons. Your conscience, with this card position, it's what you would do if no one was there to judge you. Boy, something, you're turning your back on something. You're turning away, you're not accepting. What are you not accepting? <laughs> okay. This feels like a cleaning house. Um, you are no longer accepting any relationship where you put in work and you don't get results. I get the feeling that you have been very, very giving. You have been very, very giving to connections. I get that the people closest to you are, are not, don't tend to be this loving, open connection. They tend to be someone that you are obsessively trying to earn their love, earn their respect, earn their approval. That has been the case so far. What I'm getting now, what you want to do is make assessments like, on a whole, chronically, do I give more to this connection than I receive back? Am I constantly giving to this re connection and not receiving anything except dissatisfaction, disappointment, neediness? Do I constantly feel like I'm I'm not enough? I'm too much. I'm I'm not getting my needs met. If I feel like you, each of you are using your discernment and really taking a look at relationships. And um, I get that it's it might be hard for you as someone who's gone through this very painful process of being rejected a lot in your lifetime, that it is also you you don't want to reject others because you realize how painful it is. And um quite possibly the people who keep you hooked, keep you chasing after them, keep you constantly begging for their approval and love and affection and attention, that if you were to reject them, there could be very painful consequences emotionally, mentally, and some of you could be even physically.
oh, it feels like there's that's kind of keeps everybody in this glue that really they they're whoever you are giving and give oh wow what whoever in your life who you've chased after and become obsessed about because you feel rejected constantly by them and a need to approve 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 actually I'm getting energetically, they are more insecure than you are. They constantly need that validation from outside of them. And if you reject them, just be careful how you reject them. Um, Um, yeah, I'm just, just, you know, I don't want to spread fear, but just be careful, um, how you reject them. You know, they're very, they're very insecure. They don't realize how much they feed off of your constantly giving to the connection, how much you feed their ego how much you over, over, over give. They have, they have no idea that I, they just keep you in conflict and competition and there's a lack of appreciation. It feels like when you realize this, when you see this, it becomes really easy to spot it in your relationships and to let go of those that carry this type of energy. All right. Um, your desire right now is six of cups, simply love. Nostalgia, younger you, I'm getting that your desire right now is to, is to unscatter yourself unscatter the bits and pieces of you that you had to release to be accepted by these people. That you chased after their approval, you were obsessed with their approval, their affection, the, you know, needing energy from them that you weren't getting and you were letting go of all these wonderful aspects of who you are to try to become the person who would eventually finally get the like the dream picture of this person turning around and saying oh my gosh you are amazing you are so beautiful and wonderful and lovely and and everybody is so lucky to be around you and you're so skilled and talented and you make the world a better place. Whatever those things that you've been dying to hear from them that are never going to come, never going to come. You're instead, you're, you want, your desire is to bring all those parts of you back. It's like, I am seeing this, um, just, all different ages where you've abandoned yourself and bringing those those sad aspects those those parts of you that you thought were unlovable because you were chasing someone else's opinion you're obsessed with changing their opinion when really you you just wanted to become whole you abandoned yourself again and again and again to chase this person, these people to, um, to chase their approval and becoming obsessed with that. And now your desire is just, to, I want to heal. I want to work on me approving me. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It's what matters is how I think about myself, how I view myself, how I talk to myself. I take care of my own needs. I see my value and my worth. 
if someone shows up and they they need me to prove my value and worth, then um, if they can't see it, then that's okay. It's okay. Does it still have a sting? Yeah, because you've had a lifetime of that being a, such an open wound that has been unhealed that a lot of people have taken advantage of. It has created um, coping strategies that leave you open for being manipulated and taken advantage of. Feel this great unscattering, this great bringing back and creating plenty of space for all of you that you've rejected. The parts of you that were too scared, that were embarrassing, the parts of you that are you've been ashamed of or guilty, the parts of you who misunderstood, the parts of you that were so embarrassed, especially growing up, so much embarrassment there. But bringing that insecure you in and, and being okay with that mixture. I feel like you have enough love instead of taking all that energy and time and trying to get others to validate you and see your value and worth, just to stand in your value and worth, to be your own champion. I get a feeling the more you do this, then your environment, you will start seeing people who show up and see your value and worth right when you don't need it. You know what I mean? Like right when you figure out how to cultivate your own worth and value, how to be more independent, how to be more resilient, how to be more confident, how to not allow someone's rejection to send you in a spiral of disappointment and, and going through all these cycles instead being like, all right, rejection's a part of acceptance. It's good to know who's not on the same page. Not so I spend all my time trying to convince them, but so I know that I'm not going to spend any more, expend any more energy in, in that direction. I'm going to focus on me. Thank you, next. Definitely has that. Thank you, next. Like, literally, thank you. All right, there's some clarity there. So in the center of your reading, your higher self is in the energy of heart chakra. So it's so much green, so many cups, and your heart chakra is right here. It deals with you. What makes you, you? That's what I'm seeing. You are going through a very profound transformation, seeing yourself very differently, showing up for yourself very differently, responding very differently to how others perceive you. This is, feels very empowering. feels like right now with this con um, contraction energy that you are really deciding, making decisions about who you are going to be moving forward. Your challenge right now is observe. Oh, okay. Right now, as energies are contracting, as you are closing out cycles, as you are um really getting ready for new beginnings as this energy contracts i'm getting that there's the like the emotions are very thick and it might be um behoove you to um do some meditations even guided meditations, even guided like hypnosis meditations on finding relaxation, 
how to let go of powerful emotions, how to let go of rejection, how to reframe, how to, because I'm getting this, like these emotions that have not been repressed, but there's still an energy in your space of, of needing to feel those and, and let them flow through and release. Your challenge is to find neutrality again and again and again. Getting the song, What Makes You Stronger. Um, God, it's a, I, I think it's a Lady Gaga song. There's something about um, what makes you stronger. Boy, that was a fizzled song title. Maybe a, more of it will come later. Um, all right, your lesson right now is Seven of Wands. Choose your battles. Ooh. Wow. Okay. As this lesson is coming up, as, as you're getting an opportunity in present time, maybe dealing with someone who is is or has been stealing from you, whether they literally steal money from you, they steal energy from you because you chase and chase and chase. They share, they, they steal from you because you are an easy target. I get the feeling that there's this this desire to to fight back. Hmm. Feels like you're dealing with ego. I mean, your ego. How painful it is to be rejected. To be someone who is rejected. To be someone who is taken advantage of. Boy, there's a. A real desire to, yeah, okay, there's no, <sighs> trying to stay in this energy and um, of dissatisfaction. Ooh, I, I feel like there's a desire once you see this, once you can see clearly what, how you've been behaving and and then you see how others you know how this all fits together there's a, a a desire because of the heightened emotions to set things right i i get that just by staying in this energy there's um a dissatisfaction to focus on your inner happiness yeah, they're going to be smug because they got away with something. They, they ganged up on you. They picked on someone weak. And um, it feels like when you're feeling healthier and stronger, you want to come at them and put them in their place but i'm getting that that would then continue the cycle to let let this energy go to let them go karma will deal with them if you stay and want to become their karma if you want to enact you know after feeling so powerless for so long it's your desire to take someone down um, you might be stepping into their karma. You're just stepping back into the energy. Oh, 
I'm getting a message from spirit that the, the lesson here is to to allow the process to work. You move on, you become healthy, and whoever it is, this list probably of people who have taken advantage of you, taken advantage of your kindness, that they really aren't finding success. It's false success. They are very empty and have a, a lot of like black hole energy. Their neediness is immense neediness. Neediness for others to constantly tell them that they're okay. They constantly need reassurance. And that you that used to be you. Maybe that still is you. Maybe you're deciding to let that go. As soon as you release your energy, release your thoughts, release any attention to this, there is going to be this um, a vacuum. because that it's false. Um, it feels like these people have relied on people telling them um, bullshit, not telling them the truth. These are people who can't be checked, who can't see reality, who can't accept rejection themselves, even though they reject people constantly to set up this neediness or taking advantage of people who are needy. Wow, I'm getting just the lesson is to, to walk away, to, to take care of yourself, to heal yourself, to release these energies. They'll learn their lesson, they'll get their karma. Wow, okay. So your advice right now is five of cups change your focus. Yes. So your advice, like I was saying, is to let this go, change your focus, focus on what you do have. Yes. Did this person, this person, this person, this person, did they take advantage of you? Did they take advantage of your kindness? Did you, they take advantage of your insecurities? Did they take advantage of your lack of knowledge? Did they take advantage of all your weaknesses? Yes, they did. But now that you have this information, now that you see the family pattern, now that you, you know, you're like, oh, I get it. I get what I've been doing. I get what I've been co-creating with others. I see the cycles. I see how this creates a lot of other beliefs and fears that keep me very um, obsessed and, and putting my energy into places that do not help me. You are letting go of, in the original, there's three cups that the person is focused on and grieving over that have, have spilled but there are two cups behind the person that they're ignoring. And I'm getting, I think it's Minnow Pontero talks about how um, it's quantity, quality versus quantity. And yes, three cups quantity have tipped over and there's nothing there, but in the two cups behind the person, there's quality. You are not leaving with nothing. You are letting go of the low quality energies in your life and focusing on what does have quality, what adds value. By doing this, I think you will be surprised how quickly you can recoup whatever it is that you feel that you lost.
you are tearing down belief systems. You're, you're, you're releasing generational traumas. You're releasing societal ways of being. Feels like a very like stepping out of the matrix. Once you see the um, programs and how this has kind of caught you up in a, a net of activity and, and focusing your energy where it doesn't do you any good it feels like as you refocus that you are creating a new structure it's creating worthiness confidence your advice is to to let go of these energies to protect yourself, to shift your um, perspective on rejection, that rejection is necessary. I even, um, I was talking with someone several days ago about rejection and how painful rejection can be. And this person was also experiencing a lot of difficulty around rejection and how it, it has really um, been a landscape in their life of hurdles and obstacles and very painful instances. And so we laughed about like texting each other several times a day with questions where we can practice saying no and rejecting each other. We can practice asking and getting rejected. We can practice being asked and reject from each other and, and how much, how that would be kind of a fun thing to do to make it okay to say no, to make it okay to say, I'm not interested in that, to practice rejecting and being rejected. So I don't know if that's, that just came up at the end. So, all right, collective, this is a very powerful reading. Um, I'm getting um, as a closing advice, you know, with unscattering yourself, you can, uh, if you want with me, you can just imagine a gold sun over your head and with your intentions, just put a, a giant, powerful magnet in that golden sun. And with intention, that magnet's going to unscatter and, and magnetize to it all parts of you. Anywhere where you have left yourself, anywhere you have abandoned yourself, anywhere your energy is in someone else's space, Anywhere you are obsessed with someone, obsessed with needing someone's approval, any situation where you, your focus is trying to get someone else, trying to change someone's mind about how they feel about you. Bringing your energy back, unscattering, just watch as your energy flies into that golden sun and it gets larger and larger. How large does your energy, how much energy of yours have you left in the past? How much is in the future in the form of worry? How much, how big is that golden sun getting? Watch as your energy fills that golden sun and heals so you have all your energy healed and at the perfect vibration for you today. Filling that golden sun with all the self-validation that you are worthy, you are valuable. You're perfect just as you are. And then imagining 
popping that golden sun and allowing all of your own energy to come back into your space. Filling up any tender spots, any dark areas, any spot in your mental, emotional, spiritual, or physical body that needs some love and attention. Filling it in with your own beautiful, loving, caring energy. Nice. All right. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for joining. Take care. Bye.